They didn't have to kill him. There, there were no purpose for the cop to kill him. He didn't deserve to be killed like that because he was a humble worker, hard man, helping the people from the village. And I think we, the Chunoshenos, we want justice for him. Justice for Richard Garcia, that's what residents of the northern village of Shonosha are clamoring for, following the fatal shooting of one of their own at the hands of the police. The 44-year-old was killed in his backyard on Friday evening, just before 5 o'clock, after a barrage of bullets were fired in his direction by officers carrying out an eviction notice by Garcia's landlord. The cop came in to take him out from the house, and I heard that they, all of, all, they surprised him. He didn't inspect the cops came in to his yard. But the responding officers say that Garcia charged at them with a machete, and so they opened fire on him. We are here as a team, as a result of an incident that occurred here in the village, where there was a confrontation between the police and one Mr. Richard Garcia, uh, which resulted in Mr. Garcia being fatally wounded. This person, you know, um, is very aggressive. And when the police approached the house and tried to, to talk with him, he ran out with a machete. The police, you know, understand, um, um, and they had to defend, defend themselves. themselves because if it is not, probably the police would have been hurted. As the echoes of the gun blasts reverberated through the village, residents ran to the scene to find a mortally wounded handyman on the ground. Irate villagers began hurling missiles at the cops, mangoes, rocks, and anything they could get their hands on, breaking the glass of the police vehicle and injuring police personnel, including members of the Corazal Scenes of Crimes unit. Police were unable to process the scene due to the aggressiveness of the villagers and um, for, the, for purposes of safety, both for officers and so as not to get in a, another incident with the people who decided to retreat and come back tomorrow morning. Garcia's body was left overnight on the ground, unattended, exposed to the elements and passers-by until around 11.25 the following morning when it was removed and taken to the morgue at the Corazal Community Hospital. On their return to the scene on Saturday, a team of officers including GSU, MIT, Special Patrol, Riot Squad and senior officers from the police department converged in the village, most with high-powered rifles in hand. Hundreds of villagers stood watch from a distance as the officers guarded the scene. Assistant Commissioner of Police Noel Leal says a criminal and an internal investigation into the shooting death of Garcia has begun. I have contacted the office of the Ombudsman and I believe they will be here sometime, um, not, maybe not this weekend, but sometime early during the week. We have also um, made efforts to contact the Human Rights Commission and um, I, I haven't gotten a response, but. Um, we believe they will also join us in doing an open and transparent internal investigation as, is, as in any police-related um, incident like this. A post-mortem examination has also revealed that Garcia was shot multiple times to the chin, neck, and right collarbone. Aside from what residents say was inhumane treatment by the officers, was the use of force warranted, especially so since it was four officers having to apprehend one man? But I think the officers didn't have to shot him on his head. They, they could have shot him on his, on his foot, on his hand, but not on his head, and not even try to shot them. I think the, the body have like seven shots. I wouldn't want to talk too, too much in depth, you know. It will be a matter for the courts to decide, but you know there's always two sides to a story. But what I have assured the villagers that is that maybe as early as Monday, if it's possible, like how the postmortem will be done today, if we can get the file to the DPP for her advice and directive. According to residents, Garcia posed no harm. In fact, he was the handyman in the village. He would get disorderly at times, but they learned to accept him. ACP Leal says others feared him. He used to um, go around the village um, cutting firewood for the people, cleaning the vehicles for the people, cleaning the yards for the people. That's the way he used to gain his money or even a plate of food. He was, yes, we, I could say that when he was like um, drinking his drinks, he, he had his uh, ways, but the people don't bother him, don't take care of him. 
we, the Chunashenyas, didn't have no problem with him. Now the people want to get back their house, and he has been chasing even the owner of the place with a machete. Well, there were several complaints on this with, of him aggressing people with, with, with a machete. And because even the, the village chairman um, and, and other members of the society can, can attest to that. Bonifacia Oy lives across from Garcia. She saw the police making several stops at the residence before hearing gunshots. She came out to see the dead man on the ground. And I see the um, pick up, police pick up going stop and then nobody was there. And the vehicle gone. And when he returned, there was nobody and the gun, but I don't know what time they come back. And when I hear um, the shooting, so I come out and I told my husband, um, they kill I'm Charlie. And when I see the um, Charlie was, um, he was lying down and one police um, beside him. But I thought that the police is dead, but no, he stopped and, and he, um, he stand up. According to Reynaldo Moore, the shooting was unexpected and excessive. His house and shop are next door to Garcia's residence. He says a barrage of bullets was discharged. The evidence is proven by his bullet-ridden walls and vehicle. Luckily, only he and his daughter were at home and no patrons were at the shop. Oh, several shots. Um, I, I can't recall how many, but it is so many shots. You know, I, I, I could not believe, you know, even when the man is still down, you know, gun firing is still going on. You saw that the gun firing was still going on even though the man was down there? Right. They're still firing a shot, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. I was really mad about it, you know. I mean, excessive force like this never need to happen for just one little small gentleman where they could have, you know, two persons could have just grabbed the man. This is, uh, what I said, is a normal um, business hours, you know. Um, things could have been worse, you know, but thank God, um, nothing much, you know. No one got hurt um, around my business place. Residents, adults and children alike have been left traumatized by the incident. I was frightened. Really, I really. I can't even see there because I I am I know the man. It is only myself and my little daughter and she was really, really frightened. And myself too, you know, because normally we, we never get things like this happening, gunshots being like this in the village, you know. It is a, a nice village, is it a peaceful village, you know? All the people are very shocked. Even the kids are shocked because nothing, nothing um for the one I will be for the one years and I grew up here and I haven't heard anything happen like that till yesterday. And that's why the people from Chunoj are very angry and we are asking for justice. Dwayne Moody for News Five.